morning to all. Hope your morning is good. May your day be wonderful. Everything is designed. Few things are designed. And because of Department of Information Technology, I welcome you all for this wonderful occasion. Take care of your health and protect others. All basic protective measures against COVID-19. Safeguarding our mental health in terms of COVID-19. We believe everything can return to be normal with us for people. The key to growth is the introduction of higher dimensions. I would like to share about a few dimensions of our institution. The College for Women was established in the Jubilee year 2000. Run by the Franciscan Sisters of the Immaculate Heart of Mary Congregation, Pondicherry. Affiliated to Barbados University, Tiruchirappan. Our college is recognized by 2M and 12B of UGC Act. It has a good number of students above 3,250 pursuing 10 undergraduate, 8 postgraduate, 8 research programs, and 1 doctoral program in summer, respectively. The college aims at training the young woman tries to sign wonderfully and excel as a perfect model of women. Next, I would like to share about our department. The Department of Information Technology was established in the year 2001. We have produced 500 degrees holders still now. Many of our students are working in esteemed companies and organizations. We proud to inform every year our students of my university rank. The department consists of experienced and qualified staff members. Today, Technology is a booming market full of exciting, innovative products and new learning opportunities. This webinar inspires you to develop information technology security, that is, cyber security. It is the process of defending computers, mobile devices, networks, and data from attacks. Participants, kindly remember you the audio and the video during the session. However, there would be a question and answer towards the end. You can post your question through chat box. The feedback link will be shared at the chat box after the session is over. You are as welcome as the floor on Mrs. M.A. to tell you a welcome address. <laughs> God will make a way when there seems to be no way. We can't seek God, but we can feel his presence. Yes, we all feel his presence by this good day and good life and the strength he gave us each day and for all the people around us. I begin my welcoming with the blessings of Almighty. We can have a good teacher, but if we don't have a good principal, we won't have a good institution. Yes, we are continually impressed with your ability to unite your campus. Your long hour and hard work makes such a difference to ensure the learning and growth of both of our staff and students. My hearty welcome to our principal, Reverend Sister, Dr. Eugene Amala, who is always working for the growth of our institution. Welcome, Sister. Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins championship. I extend my warm welcome to our college secretary, vice principal, administrator, HODs of various departments to this wonderful occasion. Your guest in the house is always a sign for good future. It's my pleasure to welcome Mr. Ashok Lakshmi Narayanan, sir, who completed his B.Tech in S. Abdul Rahman Crescent Institute of Science and Technology. He was interested in information security analysis penetration testing, 
vulnerability assessment and network security he was certified as ethical hacker easy counsel security analyst and easy counsel instructor at present he is working as a trainer in cybic technologies private limited chennai we are very proud to welcome you sir it is a true pleasure for me to welcome mr ramachandran sir managing director of cybic technology who is an e council authorized training partner and exam center welcome sir the road to success is always under construction it is also an honor to welcome our staff members of all departments to this special occasion success is where preparation and opportunity meet my special welcome to the participants of various college faculties research scholars and students of this webinar during this difficult time who is going to make this event into a grand success many hands make the work easy it's a glad welcome our organizing team technicians my colleagues of other department and students of my department who work together for one cause the key to achieving success is to assemble a strong and stable team good governance depends on ability to take responsibility by both administration as well as people i would like to call upon Reverend Sister Antonia Mar, Administrator of Vidya College for Women, Kumbakonam, to give present day answer. A blessed morning to everyone. Education is a shared commitment between dedicated teachers, motivated students, and enthusiastic parents with high expectations. On behalf of the Department of Information Technology, Vidya College for Women. I take great pride to hail online attendees of this webinar. Title of this virtual seminar is Cyber Security. Technology trust is a good thing, but control is a better one. It provides protection against viruses, spyware, and other unwanted programs, data theft, protect the system from hacking. provide the data and system privacy in order to accomplish our vision and mission we are prepared to take as much effort as possible for the betterment of academic scenario in global level we strive to provide an environment that is basically secret and has a framework of discipline that is flexible yet superative and freedom that allows students to learn even from their mistakes to develop into person molded by the correlative of independence and responsibility it inculcates strong values combining with academics and extracurricular activities in the student converting every individuals into self reliant and independent citizen the institution provides an amalgam of scholastic and scholastic activities we must learn to handle the electronic gadgets in a proper way wisely and prudently i hope the deliberations from the distinguished speakers will benefit the participants to update their knowledge access of the webinar and the organizing team too thank you so hi good morning to everyone this is ashok from cyber technologies so today uh, i'm just going to speak uh, have a, on uh, cyber security here so before going into the topic so let me give me a brief introduction about who am i so my name is ashok uh, lakshmi narayanan so already i think the organizers organizer gave the uh, brief introduction about the my certifications and the things here so i am a certified ethical hacker and a ec council certified security analyst and a certified ec council instructor and who is working as a trainer at jaipek technologies chennai so before uh, getting into uh, security so i would like to give an introduction on the information so we should know what is an information mean 
so to know about the information i would like to play a little video here okay so from a movie uh, from a tamil movie actually so let's watch the video first endha velai andar seiviya seiyunga sambalam kedaiyadu vela velaiki vidavidama saapadu mattu undu paravalliya ipodi kadu podunga inda pudi இப்படியே நேர போனா மாதவ பெருமாள் கோயில் வரும் அங்க புளியதர் கொடுப்பாங்க சுட சுட பட்டை மிளகா கடல பருப்பு வேர்க்கல்ல இதெல்லாம் போட்டு ரொம்ப நல்லா இருக்கும் இந்த ரெண்டு இடத்துலயும் வாங்கிக்க ஒன்னும் நீ சாப்பிட்டுக்க இன்னொன்னு எனக்கு சரிங்க அந்த பையன் வச்சுட்டு போ ஏனத்தை கொண்டு போயிட்டுன்னா அதுக்குதான் போ <laughs> 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 அயோத்திய மண்டபத்துல எப்ப அக்கார வடசல் போடுவாங்க அரசியல்வாதிங்க எப்ப அன்னதானம் போடுறாங்க ஏ ஆர் ரஹ்மான் வீட்டுல என்னைக்கு பிரியாணி போடுறாங்க விஜயகாந்த் ஆபீஸ்ல எப்ப கரிசோறு போடுறாங்க மலக்கோட்டு கொடை இஸ்திரி பெட்டி தைய மிசிய குருட்டு கண்ணாடி எப்பப்ப எங்கெங்க என்னென்னலாம் கொடுப்பாங்கன்னு எனக்கு மட்டும்தான் தெரியும் இத பத்தியா முன்னூத்தி அறுபத்தஞ்சு நாளைக்கு தீட்டல செட்டில் போட்டு இதுல வச்சிருக்கேன் இந்த விவரம் தானா என் மூல தானா நான் உனக்கு தர்றது சோறு இல்ல தம்பி ஒரு <laughs> or a particular person or a particular place or the data or the documents or the news that you heard or the directions so these are some kind of uh, informations actually okay so where do we show uh, store those informations 
So we store all those informations in our human brain, right? So first uh, place where we store is the human brain. So how much data can a human brain can store? So it can store about, around uh, 1024 terabyte, that means 1024 TB of uh, digital data that the our brain can store. But uh, human beings are not using our brain in 100% capacity. So what we do is we can't be able to remember everything. So we just move into a hard copies. That means a document. We used to store all the information inside the documents. So after becoming into a digital world, we used to store all of the information into the storage device. So as a soft copy here, right? So do we trust others on those informations? Can we trust a third person to have our informations? Actually, we don't trust, right? So we don't want to anyone that means uh, the person that we don't know want to see our data so actually what we are doing in a real time real day is we trust those people here we trust the operating system that we are using and the applications and the network providers all those people can assess our data so for example operating system so operating system will be assessing our hard disk so which means uh, the data inside the hard disk can be managed by the operating system that we install for example the windows android mac and everything for even though if you go with the applications, the next layer of the operating system, we'll be running some kind of applications like uh, games or browsers. Uh, for example, in the mobiles, we'll be running a WhatsApp or the Truecaller. So there'll be n number of applications that we'll be using in our device. And all those applications will also have a permission to assess our data inside our hard disk or the storage devices. And the network provider, we used to communicate with our friends uh, through the chat or the message or some way of medium. So all these data will be traveled over our network provider, like Atel, Geo, or Vodafone. So all those people can able to see our data. Okay. So what the persons are, who is an administrator of your device? For example, we are using a Windows and also the Android. So administrator means, so he'll be having the full control over the device. So he'll be choosing what are the data or what are the applications that I can able to have in my particular device. So for example, I'm using an Android device, okay? Uh, most of the people will be using the Android, right? Uh, well, compared to the iPhone, Android users are more. So for example, if I want to delete the Google Chrome from my device, I can't be able to do that. So it is an inbuilt application given by the Android. So if you want to do that particular task, if I want to remove the Google Chrome from my device, so what I have to do is I have to attain the administrative privilege. So most of the people will be running a third party tools to root their mobile. They used to call the routing applications. So what this routing application will do is it will give you the overall administrative privilege to your device. So once you got the administrative privilege, you can able to customize your device according to that. So once you root your device, your device warranties will also be wider along the routing applications. Okay, so it is at the operating system level. So we don't have the full control over our device. We have only limited functionalities actually. Okay, so if you go with the application level, for example, let's take a true color here. So true color, we use a lot of people should be using. I'm not sure how many people are using uh, the true color. So if you have used before, you may know that uh, whenever you try to call a person, we will get a name in the application, right? So we submit the mobile number and the name only to our service provider. For example, if I'm using the Atel, Atel will know my name and the mobile number which I purchased from the Atel, and the Vodafone Geo and all those people will be there. So all those informations are, are stored in their particular ISPs. So what the true caller is doing is he has to collect some database which has the particular uh, mobile number and the name linked to the particular mobile number. So what they did is they just launched the application. So whoever installed the particular application. Okay, so here we can get it in the uh, Google search here. Okay, it's called as a crowdsourcing of the data. Okay, so when we install the true caller application and we give the permission to access our address book, which means the contact permission, whenever we install the application in the Android, it used to ask us the permission to access our cameras, contact or device storage and all those permissions will be given to the particular application to access our data. So once we give the particular application as part of the agreement, which the true caller is making to the end user, whenever we install the application, right, they'll be using the terms and conditions and all those things. So most of the people will never go into that particular portion. We used to click the checkbox and we'll move to the next portion of the particular installing process. So according to the end user agreement, what the application is doing is, it's up updating the data at the last line here, right? The updating the data to the company server, which means your entire contact book, that means the contact that you stored in your mobile will be uploaded to the particular company server. So which is, they're using it as a source of the particular data. Okay, so this is how they used to find the particular name linked to the particular mobile number. Okay, so what about the only, not only about the true caller, 
let's take the google here so google is a top company right so what are the information that google have about you right so when you use the google service for example okay for example some kind of uh, things that they used to collect according to the service so for example the first point is the things that you search for so you if you are using the google search engine as a google.com right whenever the uh, you type or search for something they used to have collect those informations so what are the things that you search on the google they used to store those informations and the videos you watch on the youtube what are the videos that you watch on the youtube it also be collected by the google and the ads that you visit your location when you use the google map they used to collect your location information and the website you visit so when you're using the google chrome application it can able to uh, monitor all the website all the urls that you are visiting and the application browsers that you are using on the uh, android device android belongs to the google right so all the application browsers that you are using on the particular device google may able to know all those things not only this particular informations but there are a lot of other informations that the google will be uh, getting from you for example if you want to know what are the information that the google is having about you you can just go inside the google data transparency you can just google it you will get a first link here safety.google so when you enter into the particular domain they will give you the information that the google has about you so this is the service so for example when you uh, run any kind of service this are the information that the google is collecting about you when you install the uh, for example when you register for a google account for that means a gmail id they used to collect all those informations that the uh, name date of birth gender password and all those information the n number of information that the google will be collecting so why are they collecting all those informations they used to say uh, in the below here this data should be used to uh, google service more useful for you for example if you are using the google map when on your mobile your phone will be sending a bit of data about your location back to the google so for example when you are moving in the road so google used to collect all those informations about your location so how fast you are moving on the particular direction so based on this particular data they used to calculate the traffic on the particular area so this is how the google map is working actually so the data will be given by the particular users end users from each and every device the android device or the iphone what are the things that are using that application will be giving the information about the particular location to the google server so not only for this purpose actually they giving the uh, youtube and all those things will be there the lot of things are uh, they will be given here so one more thing what they do is they use it for the advertising purpose also all those information they are using it for the advertising also so whenever we run an application on the android right so we used to get a pop up applications for a minute or something so all this advertisement also given based on this particular information for example uh, they used to give the advertising based on the location of the particular user age gender and the device which kind of device that you are using so all those informations are collected by the google so if you want to know what are the information that really the google is having about me you can just log into my account dot google.com so once you logged into with your gmail address you can able to get all the information so once you go inside my account dot google.com inside the data and personalization you can drag down uh, a little bit to go to your google dashboard so once you enter the google dashboard it will be calculating getting all the data that the google is having about you okay so it will be saying the gmail conversation what are the conversation that you are having and your map location and for example what are the devices that you are using so I, actually currently i am using the samsung device so all these informations are will be registered on the google server so there are a lot of lot more details of uh, data will be there for example google drive so what are the data that you store on the google photos images so for example if i take a particular service for example the map so lot of persons have been seen before the timeline google will be having the timeline of your map locations so for example if i move the timeline for a period of month for example if i want to know when i where i was on the uh, january month so i can drag the timeline and i can able to see where i was on the particular data so for example if i choose here right on the monday So it is going to give what are the places that I have been visited here. So you can see here the map view where I was traveled actually, right? So these are the information that the Google is collecting about the particular person. Okay. So there is another uh, video I would like to play here. So it is like a uh, Google versus the Congress. This is the event that was a testimony about the uh, Sundar Pichai there in front of the uh, ministries of uh, US government. So I don't want to play the entire video. It's around uh, three and a half hours here. So I can. Uh, move into the time here so 129 uh, 1 hour 29 minutes so i'll just move to the particular portion here but we have invested a lot over the years and we do make it uh, 
are very transparent and we encourage users to go check it out. And in fact, every day, 20 million users go and check it. And over the last month, around 170 million users did uh, check it. But we are going to continue and invest more in this area. Thank you. Are you back? <clears throat> the chair recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Poe, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm over here on this side. I have an iPhone. And if I move from here and go over there and sit with my Democrat friends, which will make them real nervous. Does Google track my movement? Does Google, through this phone, know that I have moved here and moved over to the left? It's either yes or no. Uh, not by default. There may be a Google service which you've opted into use. Uh, and if so Google knows that I am moving over there, it's, it's not a trick question. You know, you make $100 million a year, you ought to be able to answer that question. Does Google know through this phone that I am moving over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson, which would make him real nervous? It's his question. I it's yes or no. I wouldn't be able to answer without looking at... Uh, you can't say yes or no. Uh, without knowing more details, sir. If I walk over there and sit next to Mr. Johnson and carry my phone, does Google know that I was sitting here and then I moved over there? You're welcome anytime, Judge. <laughs> uh, yes or no? I, I genuinely don't know without knowing I'm what services... I'm shocked you don't know. Um, I, I think Google obviously does. Are you familiar with... So that's the video, actually. So he was asking about the uh, device, actually. Uh, he was using an iPhone. So he's using a kind of a Google service. So can Google able to track me when I was moving from one place to another? So he doesn't say yes or no, actually, right? This one the picture, uh, the CEO of Google. So what actually is here is, uh, without knowing more details about the service that we're using. So if you're using any kind of Google map or something, then they may be able to track your movement, actually. OK, that's what he was saying. So this is uh, one of the purpose that the Google was using. That's what I uh, showed you before, uh, why they are using collecting those informations actually for the advertising purpose. Okay, let me move to the next one. So what we are moving into the security here. So for example, security means uh, we are going to protect our asset. For example, the hardware, the computer system that we have, the software or the data that we stored in our computer system from the theft or illegal access or illegal change or deletion. So that's what we are providing in the security in the IT security. So if you move into uh, security terms, uh, they will be divided into uh, different categories. For example, information security, cyber security, computer security, and uh, network security, and a lot of more terms will be there. For example, information security means it includes all the assets. For example, if your data is stored as a document, Okay, so it will also be considered inside the information security. If you move to the cyber security, it will concentrate only on the particular device or the digital data that are communicating over the network. So only those portions will be covered on the cyber security. If you move to the computer security, it will be concentrating only on the standalone machine, which means that systems that are not connected to the network. So these are the different terms that they use inside the security. Okay, so if you move further, so they'll be telling the key features of the information security. They used to call as a CIA drive. So which means the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So confidentiality means, uh, for example, if I own some data, so I'm the only person who is authorized to use the particular data or the information. So without no other person, the unauthorized person should not access my particular data. And the integrity, so unauthorized person should not modify any data as uh, belongs to me. For example, if I'm communicating with my friend, I'm sending a text message, hi, or something. So in between, the data is traveling over our ISPs. So for example, I'm using the Atel. So someone in the Atel may be able to change our data. There's a possibility out there to change our data. So it should not be happen. So integrity will be providing that particular functionality. And the availability will be the authorized person should use the particular service whenever he needs them. Okay, so these are the topics that we are going to cover to the entire mode uh, session today. So confidentiality and integrity means the authentication. So for example, uh, I'm using the Google uh, Gmail or something. So only when I get authenticated, I can able to change some kind of contents there. For example, username and the password, which I used to provide for the authentication. Google server will be authenticating me using the email uh, ID and the password. Or sometimes it will go for the two-factor authentication, which requires a OTP or the email verification code or something. Okay, so it's the second level of the uh, security that provided to the authentication process. 
Okay, so if we move into the security threats, so vulnerability is malware, social engineering, DOS, and there are a lot of threats that are there to the particular system. I'm not going to speak of every threats here, so I'm going to take only the particular uh, topics. Okay, so vulnerability. So if we go into the vulnerability, so vulnerability is going to be the particular uh, drawback or the flaw or the loophole into the particular computer software, which makes the attacker to enter into your system. Okay, so for example, uh, let's take uh, a CVID of 2019 uh, This is the vulnerability that uh, WhatsApp was having on the, uh, 2019. So if you want to detail more details about that particular thing, right? So WhatsApp will be giving an update like this. So whenever we use to update the particular application, right? So they used to say, what is a new thing that was there in the particular application? So they said that uh, a security fix for the CVID 2019 and 356. So what is this particular vulnerability means? If you want to know about the vulnerability, you just go and search the particular uh, CVID in the Google. Okay, so if you search for the particular CVID, you will be getting some kind of uh, sites like this. So for example, um, the NVD. So NVD is known for National Vulnerable Database. So we should be having the vulnerabilities about each and every applications. So for example, if I go inside the Mitra.org, we'll also have the vulnerable database there. So here it says that buffer overflow vulnerability on the WhatsApp pop. Okay, which are, allows the remote code execution. So what's the remote code execution means? Uh, it is the vulnerability that, uh, helps the attacker to gain over the gain over access to the particular system. So you can able to install a malicious software into a system, which gives the entire control to the particular attacker. Okay. So if a vulnerable application is running on a particular device, which leads, which will help the attacker to gain the access. So here, what they've given us, uh, this vulnerability was found in the WhatsApp for the Android period, this particular version, and if Android, WhatsApp business and the WhatsApp iOS, versions, all those things they are given. So if there are people who are still running this particular version of the WhatsApp, can be hacked. Okay, so it's a vulnerable version that they are still using. If they're not updated the particular software, the vulnerabilities are going to be there in the system for the entire time until they update the particular software. Okay, that's why the organizations, whenever the software updates was there, they used to update the particular update, uh, software, which gives a security patch to the particular uh, vulnerabilities. Okay, so the only way to overcome this particular uh, vulnerability is to update the particular softwares. Also, uh, some uh, people will be, uh, when they find the vulnerabilities on the application, they used to stop the entire application itself. So there are ways that the people can mitigate the particular weakness in the system. So if you move to the next one, the malware, which is a malicious uh, software, right? So software, so what is software can do in our system? It can do anything, right? The uh, operating system or the application or the software that we are using in our system. What are the activities this particular applications can do? All the activities can a malware also do. It's a normally a software which was designed to cause a damage to the particular system. Okay, so for example, uh, we are using the Zoom here right now, right? So for example, Zoom is uh, giving me the ability to share my screen to you people. What if, if I install the Zoom, and the so, uh, person from the Zoom can be able to monitor my system without notifying me. There's a possibility, right? He can be able to monitor some kind of things. Uh, it can happen, right? And also, uh, recently there was a vulnerability in the Zoom. Actually, they used to find uh, the Zoom was uh, used by the ministers in the India. So all those traffic, all those network traffic has been routed via the China. Okay. So the Chinese local government have the ability to monitor every data actually. So there's a possible way of uh, data privacy was not there actually, right? So all those things may happen. Whenever we use the third party's application, we have to have a trust on those particular application to run it. Okay, so for example, if you go with the uh, malicious uh, or the malware, uh, we have uh, different types here, virus, spivers, ransomware. So virus is a common name that you use to give to the malicious applications. Spyware means it's used to monitor the particular activities. So for example, if you take the keylogger, uh, as a category from the spyware. So what are the keyboard keys that you type? It will be captured by the particular attacker. Okay, and the ransomware, once the attacker gained the access to your system, he will encrypt all your data. So for example, uh, let's take an encryption algorithm that he was using. Okay, uh, for example, sorry, let me. For example, the ransomware, right? Uh, if you gain the access to your data, he's used to encrypt your data. Okay, so once the data has been encrypted, you have to decrypt it using the key. For example, if, I, if he is using the AES algorithm, okay, so if you take the advanced encryption standard they used to call, it is a cryptography algorithm that they use to secure your data. Okay, this key size, minimum key size, this means uh, if you're not familiar with the cryptography, the key, uh, you may consider it as a password. 
uh, password to secure and they used to view your data. Okay, so key size is the length of the password that you have. So if you want to crack that particular key, okay, that means the password of the AES, it will take around 1 billion billion years to crack it, even with a supercomputer. Okay, so that's why if the ransomware has been attacked by the particular organization, there'll be a lot of uh, data has been compromised. Huh? So which means the attacker can able to read the data or he can able to block the data without uh, like it can affect the availability of the particular data to the organization. So no one can not able to see the actual data what they're having in their particular system. Okay, so recently what they did is uh, the hackers was uh, pointing like a uh, taking the target uh, as a uh, photographers, uh, the studios that we have, right? They used to target those uh, photographers. So they're encrypting all the photos they have collected from the functions. So once their photos has been ransomware, that means uh, encrypted, uh, he can't be able to print or do any kind of activities. He can't be able to modify or do any kind of thing. So he has to pay the particular money to the person to get the decryption key. That means the password to open the files. So that's what happening in the recent days in Tamil Nadu actually. So ransomware attack was a, uh, Taken uh, targeting the particular photographers recently. Okay, so if we move into the social engineering, so this is an interesting topic actually. So what the people will be doing is a uh, psychological manipulation of people to perform some kind of action or disclose the confidential information here. Okay, so psychological manipulation is uh, there are a lot of techniques that they use. Uh, for example, if you go with the uh, human-based attack like tailgating, uh, if someone is entering into the outer space, I be going along with them before the door closes. Shoulder suffering, so which means uh, whenever we type the password, right, the person will be monitoring from behind. Uh. So for example, like this, uh, so in this way, so whenever we use the mobile phone, the person will be monitoring as what we're typing. So this is the reason actually the bank will, uh, ATMs, we used to see in the ATMs, right? One person at a time. So why they do is uh, no one from the beginning should see your uh, pin number, which you are typing. So that's why they have the cover over the keyboard, keypad also, right? So this is the reason that they're using actually. Okay. So if you move further, the bribe, I used to pay someone to do some kind of functionalities. For example, if I need some kind of data or the information from the organization, I'll pay the money. I'll uh, offer some kind of money to the employees to bring that data for me in, from the, inside the organization. Okay. So bribing, and there are a lot more terms will be there on the human-based attack. If you move to the computer-based attack, phishing, wishing, smishing, all those categories will be there. So these are uh, categories that we used to do the fake kind of thing. For example, fake website, uh, which used to look realistic as a Facebook or something. So when the user gives the credentials on that particular page, we can able to capture those data. Your username and the password will be captured. The page looks exactly like Facebook, but it is not. Uh, so if you want to confirm the particular page belongs to the particular uh, domain or not, we have to look at the URL, which we are loading at the domain name or the URL. Okay, and then the wishing means the fake uh, phone calls. So nowadays we used to get the call from, uh, like uh, we are calling from the bank, I'm the manager speaking to you, I want to verify your call details. So can you please share your details and the OTPs which you get on your mobile. So all those informations will be the wishing thing. Okay, so phishing over the voice, uh, over the phone calls. Okay, and, this, and then the smishing is the SMS, fake SMSs, like the SMS we get like you want this much of money. So you just uh, want to pay like a thousand rupees to get the uh, one lakh rupees or something. So when the people pay, they will uh, block your number or something like that. Okay, so and then uh, media dropping, which means I will drop some kind of uh, pen drive or something when, uh, in your vehicle or somewhere uh, where you can find that particular device. So when you install the particular device, a malware from the particular media, that means, uh, for example, let's take a pen drive. Okay, so when you install the particular pen drive, it will affect your system. Okay, so a lot of things that will be done using the social engineering. So I want to show you the example for the wishing here. I would like to uh, give a sample wishing uh, video here. Okay, so let's uh, watch this video. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to hack me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you want to do a sample of vishing call? What's vishing? Vishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi, 
Hi, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, at gmail.com, Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number. 5127. To set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy. Yeah, so that's how they'll be performing the uh, wishing attack, actually. Okay, so like the big baby uh, crying thing. Okay, so I think uh, we have got an idea about the social engineering thing. So let's move to the DOS attack here. Okay, so what the attacker will be doing here is it'll be occupying the uh, service or that are available to the uh, particular user. Okay, we will make the unavailable to the particular user to perform some kind of uh, transaction or something. Okay, so it may be a temporary or indefinitely uh, distributing the service uh, for a period of time. Okay. So for example, if we take a recent attack was on uh, taking place on the Amazon web server, okay, which was on February, okay, which is like uh, 2.3 TP per second bandwidth was occupied on the uh, Amazon's web service, which is a cloud service that the Amazon is having. And the net banking, if you take the net banking, I'm not sure how many of you are using the net banking here. Okay, so for example, uh, maybe the ICIC or SBI or Indian bank, uh, a lot of net banking uh, services. Okay, so if I go into my net banking account, if I enter the password uh, wrong for three times, so my account will be blocked for the security purpose, right? So if I enter the currency as wrong for the three times, my account will be blocked for the day. For example, if you take the SBI, right? So SBI will be uh, blocking my account after the three failed attempts, which means like it will be logged out for the next day. So it can be like available for, from the next day. So what this particular functionality is doing is it's providing the security to the authentication, which means uh, the unauthorized person cannot able to use your account uh, by brute forcing attack or something by guessing your password more than three times, it's gonna block your account. So if your account has been blocked, it will be like uh, available on the next day or else we have to go to the uh, bank branch and you have to make the changes in case of SPI. In case of Indian bank, you have to wait till the 5 p.m. on the particular day or the next day. In the ICICI, you have to uh, go and forget the password and you have to change the password to the new password. So all those things should be happened. So what I can do is I will collect the, for example, if a person is using an SBI, okay. So, and uh, the time is now it's a uh, four o'clock, 4 p.m. or something. So he has to make a payment at the 6 p.m. for his uh, fee payment or something. Okay, it's an emergency thing. He has to pay the uh, bill or something using the net banking, using his account number. So what I can do is I will log into the SBI bank on net banking site. I will enter his username there and I will enter the password three times. Okay, it's not a, I'm not gonna break in there. I'm gonna enter the random password there, which is uh, gonna give the failed result, failed attempt. So what happens at the third time is its account is gonna block there, okay? So even though he was not trying, his account is gonna block. He can't be able to do the transaction by 6 p.m., okay? So he has to wait for the next day to perform the particular task. So what if, uh, like in a similar way, if I do only 100 customers, 100 bank or 1,000 or 2,000, so all those accounts will be blocked for the entire period of time. So yeah, they have to wait for the next day to perform their transaction. So what the people will do is they will now use the net banking service from the SBI and they will move to some other bank. So what the SBI is uh, gonna happen is they're gonna lose their customers there, okay? So this kind of activities will be affecting the particular organization, okay? So how the laws are taking place, laws will be happening to the particular organizations. If uh, we go with the financial laws, the theft of the financial information of the theft of the money from the bank account. So all those things can happen, okay? Financial cost, reputation, loss of, uh, uh, fate on the particular service. Okay, I can't be able to transfer the money on the particular time which I intended to, so I don't have the fate. So maybe next time when I was trying to transfer the money, I may get the same error. So better I move to the, some other bank instead of SBI or something. 
So that's what the people will be doing. They will repetitively they will lose their customers, okay, by the hacking functionalities. So, and the last thing will be the legal consequence of a cyber breach. For example, if we consider on GDPR, so that's the General Data Protection Regulation, which was followed by the European Union countries, actually, not for India. It is followed by the European Union countries. Uh, okay, so if you go with the GDPR here, so it has a lot of fines and uh, things out there. Okay, so for example, fines and notice. So if you search for GDPR fines and notice, well, here in the Wikipedia, we'll get uh, what are the organizations that they pay the fine to violate the GDPR. Okay, so it's a regulation or the law that they have on the European Union. So to protect the data protection of the particular uh, peoples within the particular uh, country. Okay, so for example, if you take your uh, the hospital, which has paid around uh, 400,000 uh, 400, uh, euros. Okay, so for what is a uh, access policy to the database, which is allowing the technician to assess their patients or uh, information. Okay, but it, there is no proper authentication to the particular system. So if we look into here, for example, Google paid uh, like uh, 50 million euros, which is around, uh, in, if you transfer it into Indian currency, it's around uh, 400 crores or something, okay, for, to the GDPR violation. Okay, they paid as a fine. So for what is, uh, for insufficient transparency over the data. Okay, so they use this personal data to advertising, right? So the behavioral advertising, they use all those data for the advertising, okay? So it is followed by the European Union. So Google does not collect and uh, do all those activities, okay? So if you go move with the India, so they just passed the bill called the uh, data, uh, personal data protection bill. Okay, it was passed on 2019. If you want to know about the particular, so it's for the law people actually. So who are doing the uh, law, uh, those people can able to look into this particular category. So if it's not, it's a, just a bill, it's not a, passed as an act or something till now. So they're doing some kind of changes. They're getting the feedback for this particular bill and they're just uh, making some kind of changes before uh, becoming, uh, changing it to an act. Okay, so here we can find what are the final, uh, penalties that the organization used to do when they collect the personal data. Okay, so for example, the processing of data uh, or the, for example, like if your organization is processing your personal data, they used to notify you. So they used to give an, a message that your data has been processing in this particular way, like the Google did, right? So your data has been collected and uh, all those things that we are doing. So they have to ensure, they have to give the uh, certain reason why they're collecting those particular data. Okay, so but what we people is to do is uh, whenever we see the form, right? For example, when you go and browse or some kind of website or something, we used to log in everywhere we go, right? We used to log in, we used to give our data everywhere, but it, it is a most vulnerable thing that we are doing actually, okay? So what the attackers can do with this personal data is, uh, they used to build a password using that particular data because most of the people, what we are doing is uh, we have to remember our password. So what we do is, uh, for example, my name is Ashok, right? So what I do is I uh, go and type the password as Ashok and my date of birth, like uh, 1996 or something. Okay, this is gonna be my password for some kind of application, which is not actually, I'm not using this password. Okay, so people will be using this kind of passwords, right? With the name and the date of birth or the parents name and all those information that's the uh, password. So when they do in that way, all the information that are collected about you will give the attacker your password with all those combinations. He can able to guess your password easily. Okay, so whenever you sign in or do some kind of activities, make sure that uh, why are you collecting all those data? Okay, wherever you give those data, right? And then if we move here, so the SMS, for example, if we take our uh, system, right? So which thing we have to secure most in your uh, digital world? I mean, I'll be saying the SIM card, okay? SIM card, especially uh, the SMS that you're getting on the particular number, okay? So what happens if the attack again assess your SMS? Okay, so what I do is uh, I know your number, Okay, what I do is I first log into a Swiggy account, for example. So Swiggy doesn't have any kind of, uh, it has an OTP authentication, okay? So I enter your mobile number, it sends the OTP to the particular mobile number, I get the OTP and I logged in. So once I log into the Swiggy, I can get my email address there. Okay, so if you log into some kind of services, right? Uh, for example, let me log into the Swiggy now. Let me show you the thing. So you may find uh, a different, kind of what things will be here in this wiki. Okay, let me log in here. Okay, so I have, uh, let's consider, I have a SIM card which I found on the ground. Okay, so I inserted that SIM card into my mobile and I'm gonna enter that mobile number here, okay? 
enter the particular mobile number here. Okay, what I did is I'm going to get the OTP to the particular number. Okay, so let me uh, share my screen here also, uh, my mobile screen also here. Okay, for the knowing better of that. Connection. Okay. So here I got the uh, OTP here, right? For example, uh, 988647. Okay. So let me log in with that OTP. Yeah. 988647. Okay, if I verify the particular OTP, what happens is I can go into my profile here. Okay, so I can go into my profile. I can be able to get the person's email address here. For example, I don't know, I know only the mobile number. So using the mobile number, I got the OTP to log into the Swiggy. Now I got his email address here. So what I do is I log into the Gmail, right? So next thing, what I do is I go to the gmail.com and he enters a mail ID there. And I don't know the password. What I do is I'll go again into the forgot password and I will request for the OTP again, right? So I can request for the OTP and I can able to gain access to his uh, Gmail account also. So this way, so it will be connected. Overall system will be connected to your mobile number. Okay, so which means uh, the most secure thing that you should have is your SIM card or the SMS. Okay, so you should secure a SMS more uh, than any other thing. Okay, so if you change your email ID with the OTP, if you change your password of your email ID, everything, for example, Facebook, if you take the Facebook, the Gmail ID will be used as a username and the password. I can able to reset your Facebook password also there using the gmail id there right forgot password enter the gmail id get the uh, password change the link to my uh, link to your gmail id change your password log into your facebook profile and all those things can happen not only the facebook entire service that you are registered with that particular gmail id email id i can able to compromise everything okay so if you lost the sim better you call the service provider and block the sim okay that's the first step that you have to do if you not find your mobile for more than 10 minutes or something first thing you have to do is uh Block your SIM card. Okay, so the person cannot be able to access your mobile number or anything. Okay, so if you lost in the public place, call right away. Okay, that's the recommendation that I give actually. Okay, so how the attacker can get into a SMS or in the alternative ways? For example, the malware, right? So when he when you install some kind of malicious application on your mobile, he can able to read your uh, SMS. Or if I get into your uh, clone your SIM card, for example, that means uh, duplicating your uh, SIM card with the number that uh, we have the number on over our SIM card, right? The 16 digit number. Using the 16 digit number, I can able to clone your card into, I can make a duplicate card of your SIM card. So using that, I can get the message and the calls that you are receiving. So using that also, I can able to gain access to your SMS and the stolen SIM card that was, that was uh, explaining you uh, earlier. And the notification, what about the notifications? For example, the people from the college, right? We used to stay in the hostel. Uh, some college allows the mobiles uh, in the hostel. So what happens is uh, we used to lock our mobiles, uh, a pattern, fingerprint, every security things are there. Uh, no one can access our uh, information. So, but what about the notification here? So for example, if we get into our uh, OTPs, right? We can able to see those OTP in our lock screen. How many of you seen that? A lot of people have seen that, right? So when our mobile is locked, we can able to still read our messages, OTPs, everything. So what you have to do is we have to get into the settings of your mobile device and go, so it's a Android version, the versions would vary and uh, depends on the version, you have a different settings in your mobile. So for in case of my mobile, I'll be going into the lock screen. I will turn off the notification here, okay? The notification setting, I'll be turning it off. So that whenever I receive a message or the OTP, which will not be displayed on the lock screen, so no one can able to see the message unless I unlock it. Okay, so that's what we should be securing it. That's how we should be securing all our things. Mechanisms. A lot of people doesn't aware of those things. Okay, so if we, if we gain the access, then everything will be compromised. If you SMS should be the more secure thing. Okay, if we move into your banking, then right, how safe is your banking? So. Have you heard that uh, other card is uh, helpful for you to withdraw money for your bank account? So, for example, if you link your bank account with your other card, your other card number is enough to uh, withdraw money. So, for example, if I go with uh, the thing, what the government has said, for example, uh, let's take uh, other card money withdrawal. 
okay so you can go inside the uday right uday.government.in which is the government website this one is the government website actually okay uh, the upi or the other part of page actually okay so what they are given here is uh, for example this okay so let me zoom in here for the clear view i think it's not zooming in uh, okay so here we can see like uh, just like uh, knowing your bank account number no one can withdraw the money from your account similarly like knowing your other number no one can withdraw the money from your other linked bank okay so which means uh, for example like uh, banking or something you need to register like for example you need to get the debit card or uh, signatures or pin numbers or otp to withdraw the money from your account okay that's the authentication that the bank is doing to withdraw the money from your account that means your signature or the debit card and the pin number or the otp so which means like something you have something you know something you are that's what it is uh, the two factor authentication okay so something that requires about you to withdraw the money from your account so for example if you take the other card okay so other card and your fingerprint or the iris or the otp again the otp the sms sent to your mobile number is enough to withdraw the money from your account if you, say, you lost your mobile number along with the other card mobile uh, sim card with the other card it is gone and what about the fingerprint how about me cloning your fingerprint for example let me show you the another news okay which is like uh, happened in 2014 uh, actually okay uh let me open up bcc uh, news here okay so the hacker was cloning the uh fingerprint of the politician politician okay so it's a bcc news here okay so it's on the bcc.com so what the particular hacker did is uh, he was uh, cloning the fingerprint of the particular uh, politician from his photograph okay for example the politicians are uh, speaking on the uh, public meeting okay they showing their hand on something so what they, he did is he captured the picture of their fingers okay and then from the picture he was uh, cloning their uh, fingerprint uh, okay so for example the face recognition uh, which is uh, like ai right so using that he will recognize your fingerprint and he can able to make a duplicate of that okay it was happened on uh, 2014 this news was on december 2014 okay it's almost 6 years back okay so now they have implemented the uh, other card with the fingerprint so how technology has been developed for the past 6 years right so they can able to easily clone your uh, fingerprint for example if you are going to the photo uh, jacks shop or somewhere you give your other card to make a copy of your other card right so what they did is uh, they can able to take your fingerprint from the card that you are holding from your hand right other card fingerprint they are having and the other card number they will be having so they can able to easily withdraw the money from your account okay so what the government did is uh, they said that other card is not mandatory to link with your bank accounts it was paused actually this uh, supreme court i think so i'm not uh, from, uh, having the more detail on that the supreme court has paused that uh, the other card is not mandatory to link with your uh, bank or the service providers okay so what you can do is you can go to your bank and ask them to stop this particular mechanism that means uh, i don't want to withdraw money using a other card i can use my debit card or something i don't want to use my other card to withdraw money okay so what they can do is they can block your other card or something so that your other uh, banking will be secure a little bit okay so and then if you go into the payment gateway like uh, the online transaction that we used to do right i like to give you the demo here for example okay so what i did is i'm going to purchase some kind of uh, product here okay so what i do is uh, let me go with the uh, Mm, some kind of uh, page uh, for example let's go with so uh, account so let me choose a uh, minimum product with a uh, foreign currency is here okay so let me go with about so and let me purchase some product here for example let me take uh, okay 1 dollar it will be better okay i'm going to purchase a thing for 1 dollar here okay so it will be added to my cart okay let me proceed to my checkout okay i'm going to fill all my names here option i'm going to skip all the optional part here so india india spending those to them type anything okay. 
my phone number, my email address. Okay, so I'm going to place the order here. So I have read the terms and condition. Let me enter my card details here. Okay. Uh, we used to store our card information, right? For example, on the Amazon or somewhere. Okay. Uh, we used to store our card details. So when we purchase our product on the next time, it used to ask the CVV, uh, CVC code, right? That means a CVV, uh, they used to call. Uh, some banks use CVV, some use a CVC. Okay. So you, you go and type the different numbers here. It's a three digit number that you'll be having backside of your card. Okay. You go and type a different number there. Okay. See what happens there. Okay. It will accept the payment. It's not a security mechanism that they're using. Okay. So if you type the card information or something, it will automatically get you in. Okay. So 11, 24, and let me go with it. See the number. Let me place the order here. Okay, so now what happens is it will be redirecting me to the payment gateway, right? So now from the Easy Console page, I'll be redirected to the payment gateway, which means like when you're using the Amazon, uh, you click on the place order, it will take you to the payment page. So it'll be a third party, someone will be using the third party or something, okay? So here we'll be used to get the message or like uh, our uh, banking thing, right? So here what it says is uh, amount in INR, which means the Indian currency, but I was placing the order on a dollars, right, which is a US currency, I was placing $1, here it says uh, amount is in INR, which means uh, one rupee, right? So even the bank uh, message, okay, I just got the OTP for my, uh, from the bank, uh, which says that uh, this OTP, okay, so for example, uh, this OTP is for transaction of rupees one hour, okay, so one INR, which means like one rupee you are gonna transfer to the particular organization, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, make the purchase here. Okay, let me enter the OTP here. Five nine two one. Okay, after submitting it, okay, bank says it's like one rupee, right? So what happens after I purchase the particular thing? Okay, so it will be debited in dollars actually. Okay, so 74, 70 to 74, what is the uh, price now? It was uh, on the particular uh, time, right? How much the dollars were converted to the Indian rupee? It will be debited from my account. Okay, so that's what happens actually. Okay, so all those things are, okay, so now I got the message, okay, so, See there's one. Uh, okay, you spend uh, seventy four dollars sixty two on the particular debit card payment to the Easy Council. So the OTP says it's one rupee transaction, but the amount went for seventy four rupees from my account. Okay, so while using the payment gateway, be uh, sure that uh, it was a trusted payment gateway. Okay, because the payment gateway will be working in this way. For example, the working of payment gateway will be okay in this way. So you place the order on the online store. It will be redirecting you to the payment gateway, and the payment gateway will request you to the bank account. You give the card information to the payment gateway. Payment gateway will uh, get the information about your card, which banks it belongs to, and it will communicate the payment to the bank. Okay, so what happens is once it communicate to the bank, bank will send you the OTP directly to the customer. And once what we do is we enter the OTP to the payment gateway, not to the bank here. Okay, the OTP that we enter will be going to the payment gateway, not to our bank. Okay, so whenever we used to see the URL, right, uh, when we were placing the payment, you check the URL there. It is not the Indian bank or the ICICI bank page. It is a page of the payment gateway. We enter the OTP to the payment gateway and payment gateway will submit the OTP to the bank and they will collect the amount from our bank. Okay, that's what happens. So after a period of time, they will make the payout to the particular merchant, to the online store uh, parties. So that's why the reason that the, when we place the order and we make the payment and if we need a refund, it will take a period of time, like seven days or uh, eight days, it depends on the online store because the payment has to be processed by the payment gateway to the particular merchant. After that one, he, he can able to reverse the payment. Okay, that's the duration it takes. That's the reason that you used to give like three days or for the refund or four days for the refund. Okay, so clear. So all those things are, for example, if we move further, right? Uh, most of you will be using an NFC enabled uh, debit card, right? Which means the tap and pay. Okay, it has a zero security in that particular card. Okay, so tap and pay. So anyone use the card, he can just go and tap it and he can debit almost like a maximum amount, I think the 2000 rupees, right? 2000 rupees, he can able to withdraw without any kind of authentication. Anyone have your ATM card, they can use, go and tap it and make the payment for uh, 2000 rupees, within the 2000 rupees. So that's what will happen and uh, that's what's happening in today's uh, environment, okay? so. 
So these are the course that we are offering actually. Okay, that's the end of the session actually. Okay, that's the uh, things that I want to give you the ideas what uh, in this kind of a situation that we are living in today's environment. Okay, if you want to need a more further information on the information security, you can go and uh, do this kind of so courses like CES or ECSC. So all the certifications are global. Okay, which means it's valid internationally. You can go anywhere in the world. The certificate will be valid. Okay, so you can do all these courses uh, from the EC Council to get more knowledge on the cyber security. Okay, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge on uh, the particular thing, and I move back it to the organizer. Organizer. Okay, so if you have any queries, you can text a chat or anything if you want to know anything more about the particular thing. Okay, so we stop uh, stop the sharing here. Okay, so you can uh, text on the chat uh, if you have any queries or something regarding if you want to know anything or uh, regarding the hacking concept or something. Okay. Yeah, back to the organizer. Thank you, sir, for an informative and useful message, sir. Here, some questions are in chat box. How can we be sure about the website which is useful or fake? Which is uh, I didn't get. Uh, which is the website which is useful or fake? How can we be sure about it? Useful or fake? Which means like the original or the duplicate one, yes, right? Yes, so for uh, let me share my screen again here. Uh, for example, let's take. Uh, okay, so for example, let's take uh, Facebook, right? Uh, facebook.com okay so here we get the page here uh, facebook page okay so what i can do is i can clone this page and i can able to make the duplicate one okay if i make the duplicate one i can't able to run it on the same name here okay facebook.com so what i do is i go into the godaddy or some online domain registry website and i used to purchase the name that are similar to facebook okay so what i do is i go get into the godaddy.in okay i'll search for the some name related to facebook Okay, so what happens here is uh, it will list me the names that are related to the Facebook. For example, like uh, Facebook Pro dot N, uh, Facebook uh, Fit dot Me, Facebook Pro dot Org. So this kind of domains. Okay, what I do is I purchase this particular domain and I'll be running the duplicate one on this particular name. So what happens is uh, when we search, right? When we click on the link, the domain name will vary on the fake one. Okay, the original one looks exactly like Facebook dot com. Okay, so the duplicate one will be on the different name. For example, if I, uh, what the Facebook has did is, they purchase all the names here. For example, if I go back here, okay, let me type a different name here. For example, facebook.com, which is not a Facebook, right? F-A-C-E, I'm missing the E there in the domain name. So if I enter here, it will automatically read that to the real Facebook page, which means Facebook for the security mechanism, which means like uh, they think that the user may make a mistake on typing the domain name. What it is, they put all the similar domain names and they're retyping it to the real Facebook page. Similarly, in the Google, for example, if you go and type gogogle.com, okay, it's not a spelling is wrong on the Google, right? It will again read at me to the real Google page, okay? Similarly, gogogle.com, it will also read at me again to the real Google page. So after page has been loaded completely, we have to check the domain name to verify whether it's original or not. Okay, and uh, we can use a diff another tool called uh, whois.com, okay, which will give you the information on the particular domain name. For example, if you go with uh, whois.com, and we can enter the domain name here to verify whether it uh, belongs to the particular organization or not. Okay, it's called as a domain lookup. Here we can go and type the facebook.com, uh, okay, the name that we get there while loading the page, right? Facebook.com or something. Once we enter into that, we can get here domain was Facebook. And register contact information. The organization name was the Facebook Inc. All right. So this particular domain name belongs to the Facebook. So this is the way that we can verify whether it's a legitimate or the duplicate one. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your okay. next question, sir. Which one is safe for transaction? Online transaction. Online transaction. Okay. If you use the debit card, right? Uh, so debit card or the credit card. Uh, there are a uh, lot of ways. Like uh, if you go and uh, purchase a subscribe for some kind of plan, right? Uh, let's take the Google service itself. Uh, if you're using the Android application, if you want to subscribe for any kind of any application, 
you can submit the uh, card information to the Google Play to subscribe to the particular application. If you submit the card information, the money will be debited automatically. Only the card information is required. Okay. So what I prefer is you have to go with the two-factor authentication always. The uh, thing, for example, if you're going to transfer, transfer some kind of money, it should have a two-factor authentication. Okay. So only with that particular mechanism, you can be secure. Okay. Two-factor authentication means something you know, something you have, something you are. Which means uh, like it requires the uh, ATM card and the PIN number to withdraw the money, or the ATM card with the OTP to withdraw the money. So it should require some kind of uh, two-factor authentication. Okay, which bank or the which card providing the two-factor authentication, you can use that. Okay, okay it will be you, secure. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Yeah. What are the precautions to be taken to ensure safety while installing a mobile application? Mobile application mm. we are installing, no? That time, what are the precautions we have to be taken? Uh, for example, uh, if we take right, uh, what are the applications? For example, if we take on the organization level, not for the individual level. So, if we take on the organization level, if they want to install some kind of application internally to the organization, what they do is they will run a malware analyst on the particular application. This means what they do is they will analyze the entire source code. So, what the particular application is doing. For example, the application was built with a Python or C program. They will get the source code and they will analyze the entire line. What the particular application will be doing in my system. What kind of activity the particular application is doing. But as a user or the person with no programming skill, we can't be able to predict what the application is going to do in my device when I install the particular application. So what we can do is we can trust the particular third parties, which means the antivirus software or anything. It will block you from installing those malicious applications. For example, in the Windows, we have the Windows Defender or any kind of antivirus that we can use to block the malicious applications. When you try to install it, it will give you an alert. It means that it, this application is vulnerable, so you don't want to install it. And similarly, in the Android, for example, we used to download the .apk file and we used to install it. So it is completely an unsafe way, actually. Okay, we have to download it from the Play Store. So what are the applications available in the Play Store? We have to use it. We should not use uh, download the particular application from the website and we should not use it. So we used to give the permission to unknown stores, right? So we don't know where the application has been came from. They used to sign sign the Android app. Okay. Android application, which gives the information about the developer. If your system has been compromised or anything, we can able to identify who the developer was. Okay, if you're downloading from the unknown source, we can't able to know that to whom you are communicating or thing. Okay. So in this way, it will be helpful in this way. So developer build a tool, he'll give it to the signing authority, they will sign it, and the Google will be giving it to the user using the Play Store. Okay. Thank you, sir. Today we learn how to use payment cards, how attacker can get our SMS, don't withdraw money from our bank by using other card with fingerprint or face is hacked, not purchasing, that is make purchasing. These are the things extremely good, sir. Thank you. It's time to propose vote of time. I would like to call upon Ms. Yamala, Department of Information Technology to propose vote of time. Good afternoon all. Dear God, I want to take a minute not to ask for anything from you, but simply to say thank you for all you gave. Thank you, God, for giving me this opportunity and giving me the strength. I express my sincere thanks to our beloved principal, Reverend Sister Dr. Eugene Amala, who have been the rock of fabulous institution and have always provided us with facilities to excel in education. Thank you, Sister. My sincere thanks to our chief guest, Mr. Lakshmi, Ashok Lakshmi Narayanan, who delivered such an enlightening speech and excellent presentation that left everyone in the webinar thrilled. Thank you so much, sir, for the great effort you put into the lecture. I extend my special thanks to our college secretary, vice principal, and administrator for their endless support. 